Hello friends, today we are going to play a game with you. It's a guessing game and it's not going to be very much fun for us because we both already know the answers. But we have some weird objects in our house that maybe not everybody might have. And uh, they're from all over the world, different parts of the world and different parts of the country. And we want to see if you can guess what these items are. Let us know in the comments how many you get correct. And then, uh, yeah, we hope you have fun with this. And maybe it'll inspire you to buy something new. Yeah. You can always check the description box down below. We'll make sure to leave links because these are pretty cool things. All right. Let's look at the first one. Here we go. We're a family of six that enjoys learning about new cultures, homeschooling, and sharing the love of Christ with others. Make sure to subscribe to follow along, and welcome to the Bear Hill family. Ta-da! The first item is this glass box. No top, no bottom. And it has a lid that goes in it like so. Hmm, what could it be? Maybe give a hint, first of all, where did we acquire... Where in the world did it come from? Where in the world did we acquire this item, Abby? We got it from Amazon, but after learning about it in Hawaii. In Hawaii! That's right. Our favorite food in Hawaii is the musubi, the spam musubi. And it's so popular there that you eat it... Even in the gas stations, instead of roller hot dogs, they've got refrigerators and, and mm -hmm. hot boxes with musubis in them. And what it is, is it's nori with rice, and the box helps you to shape it into this rectangle shape, mm -hmm. and it has spam, and then more rice, and sometimes you can find other things in, in the gas station, um, but we even make them just like this at home. And then they're really good to take to the pool or just for lunch. We also, sometimes when I'm feeling like really lazy, I just make musubi bowls and chop it all up and throw it in the bowl. So Hawaii might hate me for that. But it's but delicious. It is so good. Uh, the bowls are less portable, but still delicious. They've got that seaweed and rice flavor that you like from sushi, mm -hmm. uh, but that Spam kind of bacon salty flavor yeah and, and it then, has the soy that's marinated mm -hmm. on it after it's fried and then we should have a furiaki is that what it's called furiaki furiaki, furiaki. <laughs> we'll link that down below too that stuff is so good but mm -hmm. we were out today when we made it it tastes fresh and light and it fills you up mm. and you can take it with you on the go. We love musubi. This is something we'd always have in our house because we make musubi almost weekly. Uh, it's become a staple in our house. We really like it. All right, next item. We have food items and non-food items and we've decided to go with the non-food items first. So the next on the list is this pan. Mm. It's cast iron. And has round shapes. Is it heavy? It Yeah, it kind of is, actually. Well, it's very heavy. You could kill me with it. <laughs> Was it expensive? We got this at Goodwill, right? I found it at Goodwill <laughs> for $6. What a deal. Probably somebody else had no idea what to do with it. Okay, so... It, actually, you can make two things with this. Mm -hmm, from two different countries. Mm -hmm. One is Denmark, and that dish is called... Apples givers. Apples givers. <laughs> apples givers. They're like pancakes with some apple flavor to them that you turn in the pan. Uh, they become ball pancakes and you can top them with powdered sugar. And mm. they're not quite like a donut hole. They're not deep fried, but they are light and fluffy and delicious. The other mm. country is from Japan. And can you pronounce the Japanese dish I make in here? Takoyaki. Takoyaki. <laughs> of course, taco in Japanese means octopus. So takoyaki mm. is octopus balls. And you make a pancake batter with fish paste in it. Uh, and uh, so it's a fishy pancake. I lost some of you already. And then you, <laughs> you dice baby octopus parts into it. Oaken, our three-year-old. Loves takoyaki. Yeah, takoyaki. You you in it. You finish by putting all these special 
condiments on it and it is delicious. Yeah, so this is a really fun one. We understand that not everybody would love it, but... But if you don't like octopus, you probably like Abel Skeevers. Yeah, they're like pancakes, but really yummy and time consuming. They're tricky to make, but they they're are. but they're fun. Yeah. And so this is why we have this item. Mm-hmm. All right. I've got one that I think I introduced you to, right? What is this? Yes. I had no idea what this was. Look how little it is. It's just little. What would somebody use this for? All right. I thought maybe it was a musical instrument, like you blow oh, into its a hole beak. In the bottom of it. Maybe you blow into its <laughs> beak and it makes a sound. No. Nope. No. No. No hole in it. Okay. So I got this back in 2006 when I went to China. There's your hint, China. Mm-hmm. This is for your chopsticks. And you don't want to lay your chopsticks directly on the table. Gross. So you rest them on the chopstick rest. It keeps the messy end of the chopsticks off of the tablecloth. And the, the end that you're going to grab over here. Yeah. Isn't that kind of cool? Pretty cool. Item number four is a oh. oh, curious metal pan. It is okay. not for so, hitting your husbands. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, any ideas what this is? Really big cupcakes? That's kind of what I first thought. Really big muffins. No. I actually got this as a bridal shower gift. Very strange gift. Isn't that weird? Yeah. It was for a recipe we didn't know how to make, so we had to learn it. But it is an American recipe. Is it? It is. Yeah. I asked Echo today, and ah. she said it's from America. Uh... This is for popovers. Popovers are a food that I loved as a kid. We would mm-hmm. have it whenever we went to a very fancy restaurant. They'd have these huge popover rolls. And Abby got quite good at them when we were first married. Yeah, they're quite time consuming. And they only make six. And so for a family of six, I really need another pan if I'm going to make them regularly. So special occasions, specifically like... Thanksgiving or Halloween or something like that. That's when I usually make popovers. Mm-hmm. In the fall, we've made um, popovers with our pumpkin stew that we like, and then they work mm. really well together. They do. So they are for like special occasions, not a weekly thing. Yeah. Well, the next things that we got, we got from your family heritage. So, big hint, they're Scandinavian. Yep. They're from my Swedish grandmother. She used to travel back to Sweden every year. And uh, they have these horses on them that are called... That's kind of the question, Well, right? that's sort of is the question. Is is, the, do you know what, what it is? is it? Yeah. You know they're a horse, right? But what are the items? These horses are Dala horses, but each mm-hmm. item still has a different use. We have mm-hmm. many more Dala horses in our house. Yeah. This one, I remember seeing in the middle of my table growing up all the time. It's a napkin holder, right? Very nice. And a spoon rest. I know that the, like what the items are are kind of familiar, so it's mostly what is on them was the mm-hmm. doll horse. But then we have this one also, which says... Smooth. <laughs> um, we were always getting these uh, and things of this shape from my grandma for oh. gifts. Uh, because Scandinavians love their different kinds of butter knives. Mm-hmm. Uh, all sorts of different spreads. Cheese spreads and fish spreads and butter spreads. Mm. And so I have all sorts of fancy butter spreaders. <laughs> Smur means butter in Sweden. Do you guys have fancy butter spreaders? I'd, I'd be interested. Is that something other people have in their house? Maybe. Okay, well, actually, that leads us to um, an item that we don't have, but kind of a segue into another one that we do, and that's lingonberries. We love lingonberries, and they're from Norway, or Scandinavian, Sweden, and we usually pick them up at Ikea as a jelly, uh, and we would put them on top of, like, the apple skeevers, or we really like them on ice cream or toast, obviously. Mm-hmm. Really good. But we did not have lingonberries this time. So instead, we picked up... Well, we didn't pick this up. This was a gift. Somebody just went to my hometown 
And here's my question for you, because it says on it what it is. Where, what state does this item come from? And there could be a couple of them, but huckleberries. Have you had huckleberry jams or preserves before? What state does that come from? All right. I went to high school in Montana and we would have huckleberry ice cream and huckleberries on all kinds of things that I really liked. So we put them on our apple abelis givers today. Um, but you had it in a different state. You had them in? In Washington. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're from like the northwest of the United States and into Canada a bit also. Imagine like a blueberry, but not. Uh, and lingonberries, if you're curious, are like a cranberry, but, but not. not. <laughs> um, lingonberries are my absolute favorite berry, hands down. I like to put them on anything. Uh, uh, huckleberries I'm less familiar with, but they're very delicious. So good. All right, so guess the country that these next items come from. This is, um, it's like a tea leaf, actually. And when you make it, it turns quite uh, dark orange, reddish, depending on if it's in water or milk. And then we have these to show you. These are kind of gummy, sticky, ball-shaped spheres. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> they're very chewy. <laughs> Do you know what they are? They often go in drinks, and one of the drinks that they go in is this one. You want to grab yours and show it? Here's a taro tea. Um, mm -hmm. Also, you would put it in bubble tea. This is boba or tapioca pearls. Mm -hmm. Those are rainbow ones. Yep. And this that I showed you goes to make Thai tea, and this is my Thai tea. So good. I don't actually prefer Thai tea, but Abby loves it. And it's something that I like to surprise her with mm -hmm. um, when I come back from an Asian grocery store. Uh, taro tea is something that I thought I would not like at all. Um, it's really a taro smoothie. There's no tea in it, right? Yeah. Taro is actually a purple potato. I thought it sounded really nasty. These things are magical. So good. So good. So that's something that we like to get when we go to... Did you guess it? A Vietnamese place. Um, you can also get them at a lot of Asian places, but I think they're primarily Vietnamese. And uh, because we live really far away from highly populated areas, actually, we try to make this stuff at home. So this is the stuff that you need for making Thai tea. And this is the bag that we got the tapioca pearls in and this is a five minute really easy one that you just boil to make your own little bobas and if you want to make your own taro smoothies you can get this bag and it's just like a purple powder that you mix with ice and milk but maybe before you buy the big bag of them decide first uh go to a bubble tea shop and order mm. one of these drinks first when you're in a city or if you live in a city order one and see if you like it and you could definitely make it at home for a lot cheaper and if you live away from the city like us it's nice to learn how to cook things yourself yeah so we'll have the links down below so you can find these items online too if you've already had them and know that you would like to make them yourself the next item is near and dear to my heart because it is Hot sauce. You probably guessed that already. I have had many hot sauce collections over the years, but they don't last long before I eat them. And this hot sauce uh, will tell you the name, but you have to guess where it's from. Picamas. Picamas or picamas is become a staple in our house. We use it on all sorts of things, mm -hmm. but especially anything Mexican flavored. Um, it's not as spicy as you might think. It's got a little bit of a lime kick to it. And it is so good all by itself. It's the only hot sauce that Abby will eat straight up with I nothing love else. It. And the country that it's from, at least what we think, is Guatemala. Well, we think that because it says the most popular sauce in Guatemala. And we buy it at a South 
Central American store. Yeah, Central American store. Yeah. So must be a Guatemalan hot sauce and we love it. It's mm -hmm. probably difficult to find. You probably have to shop around at a couple different Mercados and things to find it. Yeah. But I Seriously, highly recommend this one. Ditch your sriracha. Like, I don't like sriracha. I do not say that about sriracha in front of me. Sriracha is amazing. Uh, but a lot of people, okay, okay. when it comes to Mexican sauce, are all about the Cholula. And I get it. Mm. Cholula's good, okay? Valentina's better. But... This is the best. You need to pick up some Pecamas. Mm -hmm. If you're a true Mexican fan, you got to give it a shot. It's so good. <laughs> okay, well, that is all that we have for you uh, from our little stash here of things that we have from around the world. How did you do? Did you know the items? How many did you know? Did anything surprise you? We'd love to hear. Yeah, I hope you had fun. Uh, we would like to know what odd items do you have floating around in your kitchen mm. that other people might not have that might not be in the average household we kind of focused on kitchen foods today but if you have other random items around your house that you don't think we would know what it is uh leave yes. a description in the comment we would be very interested to play this game in reverse mm, yes all right thank you so much for watching you guys and we'll see you next time Bye. -bye. Bye.